afternoon, Eric. Uh, wow, we're right here. The year is wrapping up fast, isn't it? Boy, it is. So, I mean, I, I don't know. It, it, we're going to be in 2017 in just a few days. Yeah, so this one is, uh, this webinar today, for those of you still looking into whether this is the right business for you or not, we thought we would do one that's based on the questions you should be asking about any business. If you're starting a, uh, you know, a, I don't know, a windshield repair business or a janitorial business, these are the questions you should be asking the people that you're talking to, including, of course, the people here at ABS. If you're looking into getting into, into medical billing, uh, doing this business, then these are some important questions. We're going to try to uh, kind of explain to you why they're important and why you should be asking these questions. Absolutely. So what I'm going to do, Patrick, I'm putting up some of the questions that we're going to go through this afternoon. Yeah. So, folks, as you're as you're paying attention here and you're going to kind of see, you're going to see where we're going uh, this afternoon. So, Patrick, you know, here are a few questions uh, that we're going to go. Is first of all, you know, is there a need for my product? Uh, what kind of what kind of training or experience am I going to need? How much money can I make? Uh, maybe without hiring anybody, is this business that I can run from anywhere? Maybe even from home. Uh, what additional expenses will I incur uh, after I pay my fees or licensing fees? And here's some more, Patrick, I know that you want to go over too as well. Yeah, I'll read these. How, how can I have credibility as a new business owner with no experience or clients? Uh, what is my territory? What does the uh, ABS, the ABS, what does ABS do to help me get clients? Uh, what will make me unique? In the marketplace, what's the ex success experience of other business owners in this industry? And last but not sure, what assurance do I have that I won't fail? I think these are business questions that you should be asking anybody about any business. But Eric, we've heard all of these before, haven't we? Absolutely. And folks, these are not all the questions we have to answer today. Obviously, we have a question box there. So if there gets to a point where we're starting to look at anything, please go ahead and uh, type in some questions. And we'll we'll see what we can do to help answer some of those questions. So Patrick, let's get this thing kicked off right off the bat. I know because we've got a lot of slides we want to try to get through in the next 55 minutes or so. So the first question is: Is there a need for my product or service in the marketplace? Patrick, there's got to be. Everybody thinks that the medical billing business is saturated. So we need to kind of tap into this question here. Yeah, because it's been around for a long time. Uh, my wife Linda started doing medical billing, uh, Eric, back in 1987. Right. And so, you know, uh, everybody thinks there's a lot of folks out there doing medical billing. Uh, there are, but at the same time, Eric, there's a lot of doctors, almost a million medical providers in the United States. And they right. all have uh, the same problem, uh, <laughs> the same problem this poor guy has. And that is, how can I be uh, profitable in my medical business? Now, Eric, we asked this question in our workshop about doctors. Uh, how many of you have had any experience working with doctors in the past, and how many of you have realized that doctors are the worst business people in the world? Yeah. They are, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Everybody seems like they raised their hand on that one. Yeah, they're horrible. But that's because they don't have a lot of training in their medical school uh, as to how to run a business. They're just taught how to get people well or how to, you know, what drugs they need. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of like uh, everything else that we do. If if someone else is doing it this way, then I probably should be doing it this way. And most doctors think I probably ought to have billing in my office. And I think this chart will kind of show why maybe a doctor should not have their billing department in their in their uh, in their office there. Yeah, we did a little survey here and found out that doctors who are doing the billing in house, you see that middle column there, in house costs. That's what a doctor is now currently spending on all the things you see listed there. We won't read them all right now. Uh, in fact, you guys will have a copy of this at the end of the webinar here. We'll show you how you can get a copy of this, all these slides. But uh, as you can see, this is based on a doctor doing 400 claims a month. That's only about 20 a day uh, at, uh, let's see, uh, times 12 months at about $100 per claim and assuming that you are charging 6%. And, that, and folks, that varies. Uh, we help you with the pricing. But... Eric, I've seen it as low as 5%. I've mean, seen it as high as five, 8 or 9%. But right. even at 6%, uh, they're only going to pay you, uh, as the medical billing company uh, they're outsourcing to, $28,800. But look what the doctor has cost-wise in their own office uh, using one and a half people uh, doing the billing at about $15 an hour. And all these other, uh, I call them hidden uh, costs because the doctor don't – Think of this. If you ask a doctor, Eric, what, what does it cost you to do a, a medical claim in your own office, they'll, they'll say, oh, I don't know, a buck or two. Right. <laughs> it comes down a whole lot more than that. 
Yeah, because they're not, like you said, they're not, they're not pulling all the everything that it's actually costing them to have someone on staff along with their software, everything else that goes along with that. So, folks, this is how it is. And as this next slide illustrates, we want to make sure that the doctors do what they do best, and that is seeing patients. This is really what they want to concentrate on here, but they know that the billing has to be done. Uh, I mean, if you think about it, the doctors, most of their revenue comes from Medicare, Medicaid, uh, if they're taking that, and, you know, private insurance. Uh, right. Even under Obamacare, under the Affordable Care Act, doctors have to bill to, to get paid. But what they'd rather do is focus on taking care of their patients. That's what they love to do. That's what they were trained to do. And like I said, they, they just do it sometimes in-house because they don't know what else to do. they they got to get paid. And then they haven't been approached by somebody like, uh, like our licensees who've gone out there and educated the doctors on the, the fact that they can save a lot of money, as you saw in that previous chart. What was that, Eric? Uh, 65000 a doctor was spending in-house versus right. the 28000 or so that they would pay uh, one of our licensees. Yeah, at least half. Yeah, at least, at least half. So, folks, that's the first question we want you should be asking. Is there a need for my product or service in my marketplace? And now, folks, just, okay. let me say why that's important because uh, I just assume that people would understand that there are some products or services out there, folks, that there may not be a, a real market in your area. You need to really research that thoroughly. The fact that there are as long as there's human beings, Eric, and as long as human beings get sick, and as long as human beings go to the doctor to get well, and as long as the doctor needs to get paid for that, somebody has to bill somebody for the doctor right. to get paid. And they get very little of their money from the patients themselves. And so that's why that's an important question, folks. Be sure and ask uh, any product that you're looking into is, is not only is there a marketplace today, but will there be tomorrow as well? Right. There you go. All right, so let's move on to the next question here, and that is what kind of training or experience is necessary for success in this business? Patrick, so many people are asking, gosh, do I need to go to a, a school, a college? Do I need to have any experience? Do I need to have a certification or anything? Great question that we need to ask and, and get answered today. Yeah, and you do need some kind of training, of course. That's why we do the week-long workshop here in Dallas. Uh, Eric, let's kind of explain to people, first of all, what, what, what's involved in this and, and show them why that we can train them. Uh, one of these things that they're going to run into, of course, during the class is we're going to pass out something that looks like this. It's called a, a super bill. Kind of explain what this is. Yeah, a super bill is what doctors are currently, and a lot of doctors are still do, using this as their paper charting. So what it is is that they're, they're taking what's called their diagnosis code, which is what's wrong with the patient, and then the procedure code. This is what the doctor has done for the patient. They'll circle these numbers and they'll, they'll do all sorts of stuff. So you can see way on the far right hand side, you can see uh, that first one, allergic rhinitis, is 4779. That's what's wrong with the patient. Far left is the procedures. You can see this is what the doctor's done. This is what the doctor is actually going to give you as a biller to actually bill. So for, first of all, let's take the fear out of you don't need to know any coding because you can see all the codes are actually already on the doctor's super bill. But to Patrick, talking about codes, there's literally thousands of codes. There's nobody, even if they go to school, is going to memorize all these codes. No, it's impossible. In fact, when the new ICD-10 codes came out here uh, last year, uh, there was uh, it like tripled the number of codes that there are. But folks, you don't have to know about coding unless you're unless you're trying to get a job inside a doctor's office, maybe you want to say, I'm a certified medical coder. Well, then go to college for a couple of years and get training and pay some money and then go to work for a doctor and you probably get paid, right. you know, $35, I mean, $35,000 a year or something. It's, it's, not the, it's not the necessary thing that you have to have because of what we're illustrating right here. Yeah, and in our website, in our, I mean, I'm sorry, in our platform, what we have is what's called EMRX and iClang, and we've got all the codes built into it. Matter of fact, we're actually coaching the doctors on making sure that they're giving out the right codes. So it is the doctor's responsibility to code their, their visits for their patients and then hand that over to a medical biller. So folks, even if there's someone in-house, that person doesn't mean that they're a coder. They're a biller. And a biller just takes the codes and then puts them in, in some type of billing program. And But again, like what we're illustrating here, Patrick, 
we've got the ICD, the old ICD nines because the doctor still can't make that transition over. But we bill off the tens and the tens, the ICD tens, which is the diagnosis codes version number ten. We already have all of those built into the system. So, folks, you won't have to do, need, need to know any billing. Our system actually helps you and the doctor right along with everything that needs to happen. Yeah, and, and the uh, picture that you're seeing here really is not a picture of the billing side of the software. This is the electronic medical records that the doctor will use. And normally right. they're using, well, I mean, they could use it on the computer in, their, in each one of their exam rooms, but nowadays they're just carrying around, you know, their iPads. On an iPad, the doctor can be running the software and see the code that he needs to put in, push it, you know, tap it with his finger, and boom, it's all done automatically. So, yep. no, you don't have to know codes, folks. And if you do have questions about codes, we have a service called CodeWrite that you can provide to the doctor for a fee. You make money on this service. And we have the certified medical coders that are going to provide uh, whatever information and, uh, you know, the, the codes that the doctor might want to know about. So that's why you don't need no books. Yeah, and, and what we're illustrating here is during the training class, instead of being a certified builder or a certified medical coder, Patrick, we've got a new certification called Certified Medical Revenue Manager. Right, Certified Medical Revenue Manager. Now, folks, this is a certification that comes through an organization called the Medical Revenue Management Association of America. And this is certification that shows that you are somebody who's been trained to be able to handle the revenue cycle inside of a doctor's office. So once you've completed this one week's workshop here in Dallas, you've been through you know, 40 hours of training, you will have that certification. Now, there's other training that goes on through our private website for our licensees. There's probably another 100 hours of training on there that people can take right. at their leisure. But what you need to know to get started is all covered in that first week. And proof of that, Eric, is that I interviewed a young lady last week that was uh, uh, in our September class. She's already got three clients. She says she'll make about $100,000 from those three clients in their first year. Yeah. So, And she had no background or training in the medical field. Yeah, so folks, as you can see here, we've answered at least probably the some of the two biggest questions that we can we've ever been asked is is there a market and can I can I actually do this in my area and then what kind of training do I need and, and so folks so far we have we've hopefully brought out everything into you so far so that now we can go into showing you how much money you can make everybody wants to know how much money they can make Patrick <laughs> yeah well you know that's one of those things that's hard to answer uh, folks because everybody's different uh, anything we talk about today, for example, is all based on your own ability. Uh, it's not that we can guarantee any kind of income. You understand that. Uh, any company that did that, you should run as fast as you can from them. Uh, but we did come up with some tools that allows you to figure out for yourself what kind of potential is out there. Right here on our website that you can see there on the screen, uh, absystems.com. You can go there and uh, right underneath that income, what is that called? Potential? Yeah, income potential. You'll see a little tab up there that uh, says uh, something about a, uh, a calculator, income calculator. And so we're going to show it to you here and how it works. These are just screenshots. But basically, um, this one is uh, showing that you can actually make uh, $31,000 uh, each year servicing one office. So let's see how we actually got to that. Okay, absolutely. Let's, let's go to that uh, because everybody wants to know really on, you know, what's the legitimacy of actually making any money. So, folks, what we're going to do, we're going to do this very slowly, and we're going to take one doctor, and we're going to take a doctor that's just a regular family practice doctor. We're not talking to any specialty here, just a regular family practice. Uh, that doctor is going to see roughly about 20 patients a day. Patrick, you and I both know that a doctor sees way more than 20 patients a day. But on average, we like to kind of keep it low, lower than the average, about 20 patients a day. That equals to the doctor about $2,000 a day because each of those patients are valued at $100. So you take $100 times $220, that's how you get $20,000, I mean, I'm sorry, $2,000 a and, day. And, and, these, the and these numbers, by the way, are probably low. Uh, like Eric said, Eric. these are estimates, uh, but some specialists might only see 10 patients a day, and then somebody like a general practitioner, family doctor might see 40 patients a day. But, right. So 20 is low. 
Uh, and then, of course, the $100 per claim is low, Eric, because we know that the typical visit out there is going to be probably $160 or $70 nowadays. Right. And so you take that number, and then, now this is on a, on a per day part of it, so you take $2,000 that the doctor is trying to get reimbursed every day times what you're going to be charging the doctor, which is about 6%. Your average earnings at that point is going to be roughly $120 per day. Now, what's interesting enough is that that's going to take you less than 90 minutes per day. And, folks, uh, Patrick, you know, if, if you even think about minimum wage, there is no way that a minimum wage person can work less than two hours and make $120 a day. And, and folks, this is because, again, uh, that 6%, if you're wondering where the 6% comes from, in the industry that's out there, it's been around for, like I said, my wife started back in 1987 doing the medical billing. That was typically it. Five to six to seven percent. Well, as the you know inflation and, and the claims value goes up, of course the, the amount of money stays the same for medical billers. So that's right in there again. Eric, six percent is probably on the low side of what you know a lot of our licensees are charging. But so we, we try to be as as uh, uh, you know fair as possible in, in using these numbers. Yeah, and so if we kind of look at it throughout the year. You've got your average earnings per year, or uh, average earnings, $120 a day times five days a week, 52 weeks out of the year, is that $600 a week, it's $31,200 per year per doctor. So remember, that's per doctor, that's about two hours a day. So imagine if you had, if you could squeeze in four hours a day, you'd be making $62,000 a year with two doctors. Yeah, it's very manageable, and uh, people find it hard to believe that you can earn that much. But, folks, the doctor, remember, is paying more than this uh, to try to keep that in-house. If the doctor is doing it in-house using his own, well, you saw the chart earlier, 65000 versus 28 in this case, thirty one two. Uh, so a doctor would be spending uh, probably 60000 or so to do right. this inside their own office. So it doesn't make sense from a financial standpoint. No, it doesn't. All right, let's keep moving on because this hour is going to go by fast. Okay, so number four, is this a business that can be run from anywhere using current technology? Patrick, I know there are a lot of people who ask this question because this kind of gets into that cloud-based, you know, what is cloud-based? What is? How can I run this from the Internet, I think? Yeah, so let's talk about that just for a moment, folks. Imagine a business that allows you to use a laptop and a phone to run the business from anywhere in the world. Uh, that's what a cloud-based uh, billing system allows you to do. Uh, if you have a server-based, of course, you have the worry of losing your laptop, dropping it, losing all your data. With a cloud-based, all you have to have is a connection to the internet. Go to any, go to any computer in a, you know, a library and log into the internet, and you can log into your system and do the billing from any computer. Nothing has to be downloaded to that computer. That's the difference between a server-based and a true cloud-based system. So, as, as we've illustrated here, the key advantage to uh, having that cloud-based system uh, is making sure that you can uh, run the business from anywhere at any time. We've had licensees go literally to Hawaii, Hawaii and sit out on the, the beach and run their business from there. It's a fantastic way to uh, have a flexibility in, in a home business. Absolutely. And then you, you're still going to need to get things from the doctor. So how can I get this super bill, new patient information, and I'm still trying to work from the Internet? Patrick, I think we've come up with a great solution. Let's talk about iDocs now. Yeah, iDocs now, folks, is one of the services that you can actually offer to the doctor. Uh, for example, all of those files that you see illustrated there in that flyer on your screen uh, are the existing records that the doctor has. Uh, now, if he signs up with you on the electronic medical records, of course, new patient information can be put into that system. But his current files, as you can see there, are just taking up space in the office, sometimes some valuable space that he could be using to see more patients. All of that can be uploaded into the cloud system called iDocs Now. Folks, this is a HIPAA compliant. That means it, it protects the privacy of the data. Uh, we are you know, compliant with all that. And, and allows the doctor and his staff to just simply drop it into a scanner, push a button, and all that data is sent to the cloud. So this is how you will be receiving the information from the doctor to conform with the HIPAA rules for privacy. We'll use this system. When you get the information, you can see illustrated here, this guy 
this handsome young man is looking at, at the camera. <laughs> He has two monitors, so you know for another $150 or so, you buy a monitor and hook it up to your computer, and you put the document that came in from the doctor on the left screen there you see, that's the super bill, and then on the right side is our billing system that this young man is actually putting into our system. So it's a wonderful way to have no paper at all. You never have to store anything in your, your house. Uh, again, you wouldn't want to do that for HIPAA rules and regulations. It's all right. stored in the cloud. All right, let's keep moving on here, Patrick. Uh, question number five: What about uh, what? What additional expenses will I incur after I pay my franchise or licensing fee? Before we go any further, this is a great time to talk about: Are we a franchise? And if we're not, what are we? Yeah, we use that term because you can think of it in the same model as a franchise in that we provide to you all of the materials and the training and the support that you need as a business owner without you having to recreate the wheel. It's not a franchise though because we don't have territories as you'll learn here in just a moment and we don't have ongoing royalties of any kind. So after you've paid our initial licensing fee of $24,990 after that, folks, there is no other fee that you pay to us. ABS, uh, American Business Systems, there's not a dime extra that you pay. Now, you might have some expenses, though, as a business owner. For example, if you don't have a computer uh, or a cell phone or a phone of some kind, uh, you, you couldn't run this business. You have to have one of those two things that are both of those things there. Right. Now, that means because if, if, you, if, you, if you want to know how you do faxing, nowadays that's all done through email. There's, there's private fax uh, systems that can be used virtual fax system, so you don't even need a fax machine. These are literally the only two office pieces of equipment that you need. Well, Eric, we probably ought to stick on there, maybe in the future, a printer. That You might need a printer for some things, right? Here and there. Sure. But uh, most people even have that already in their office if they've got a, a computer. So uh, that's about all you need to worry about as far as initial equipment. Now, there may be some ongoing uh, things, like if you hold a, a trade show, like we teach you to do in our training, you will need some sort of booth this is kind of hard to illustrate that this is actually a, a large, uh, you know, this is the 10 foot wide booth. But folks, we've paid the $5,000 to have this booth created. All you do is tell us that you want to borrow it and we ship it out to you. I and mean, you have to pay for the shipping. So there's some costs that you would have, uh, but that's it. Uh, you, you don't have to rent a booth like this or make one on your own. So there are some costs. And then of course, any kind of marketing materials that you need. Now, initially in your kit, we're going to give you over 2,000 pieces of marketing materials. Illustrated on this next slide. <laughs> I'm pausing there for dramatic. There it is. And look, lots of different stuff that we've developed. Folks, we've spent over $100,000 developing the marketing tools that you need to build this business and look like a, you know, a reputable business. Now, you could print some of this stuff on your inkjet printer at home, I guess. Uh, if you weren't going to do this on your own. But folks, this makes you look professional. And you see the three books illustrated there. One of them is a, an e-book, the How Physicians Can Get More Patients. Uh, but you'll notice there's two other books there, Cash Crunch to Cash Flow and The New Thriving Medical Practice. These are physical books. Look, I have one right here. I'll be back. <laughs> here it is. And, uh, and, and this book is a marketing tool. Folks, we show you how to mark this book up. Uh, in such a way that when you hand it to a doctor with your contact information on the inside cover here, that doctor is impelled to read those highlighted sections. It educates the doctor on the need for your services. These books on Amazon for $24.95, by the way, uh, is your, co your cost is about $4 a book. It's a great marketing tool, and there's other things that you see illustrated there that we've come up with that are provided to you in the shipment that comes to you, and then if you need more of them, of course, you you have to pay for those. So again, we're talking about what other costs you might have in running this business. But folks, very few people reorder any of these marketing materials because they don't need them. Matter of fact, again, folks, if you have not heard the interview from last Wednesday with Jennifer Boyd, you need to go back and find that particular webinar. Uh, she, in our September class, she used that book, The New Thriving Medical Practice. Uh, she gave it to three doctors, and all three doctors uh, went through the whole process to where she signed up three doctors. So I don't even know, Patrick, if she's used any of this other 
information yet, but she will be. But as she continues to keep her, having her business grow, but folks, we we have all the different needs and all the different ways for you to market this business. So you really don't need any more investment of money. The only thing, Patrick, I think we can both agree on, you just need to invest your time in getting out there and getting this information out to the doctors. Yeah, really, uh, it's more time than it is money. Uh, because, folks, the reality is that all you really need to do is go get one client. And if you treat that client correctly and do what we tell you to do to increase their revenue, they'll be so thrilled with what you're doing, they'll tell all of their associates. I yes. mean, doctors talk among themselves at the country club, uh, in the hospitals, and so forth, and they will tell other doctors about what you're doing. We'll show you how to get referrals from doctors and grow your business organically. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so now let's talk about credibility because, Patrick, I know a lot of people get started in this business. They get through this training, but they've never been in a medical billing business before. How can I have credibility as a new business owner when I've had no experience or no clients? It's a great question. Right. Well, first of all, we teach you to position yourself, folks, as uh, a part of the nation's largest network of independent medical revenue managers. Uh, we've literally got uh, people from coast to coast, of course, who've been through our training, just like you have. So you can tell people, honestly, that you are a part of the nation's largest network of medical revenue managers. Uh, we, do, we process millions of claims every year for millions of doctors from coast to coast, uh, literally uh, thousands of doctors bringing in millions of dollars for those doctors that they wouldn't have seen otherwise. Now, you see how I just positioned how you can position yourself. By being a part of something like ABS, you are a part of something much larger than just someone who's working out of their spare bedroom, which you may be, but they don't have to know that. Right. And our, our software is truly backed up with some wonderful awards. Yeah, folks, we've won awards uh, from all sorts of uh, industry uh, uh, organizations that have looked at our software and said, this is what doctors really need to maximize their revenue. It's all about maximizing their revenue. And so, folks, the credibility comes from having uh, us partnering with you and our technology partners to make sure that the doctors and you have the right tool to maximize their revenue. And then, like I said, once you uh, provide that uh, service to one doctor, we have references from other doctors that you wouldn't have otherwise uh, that we can give you that so that doctor can actually call and talk to other doctors who have been using uh, our, our system to maximize their revenue. Now, the way that works is uh, we do what are called live demos. These demos are given to you and your prospective doctors by our technicians behind the scenes. We have people dedicated. To all they do is provide that demo. And I think we have a slide that illustrates that. There we go. And as you can see, kind of on the left side there, we're illustrating that we're doing the demo uh, behind the scenes, of course. And there's you, uh, uh, maybe up at the right-hand corner there. You can be watching this, of course, live. Uh, and then the doctor and his staff, of course, can be watching from their office. It's a wonderful way to illustrate to the doctor why we can maximize their revenue. When they see the features that are built into our software that they'll have access to, uh, they're blown away, aren't they, Eric? You do Absolutely. something most so you know. I do. And I know a lot of licensees, uh, when they first get started off, they're, they're always concerned about what if, what if my doctor wants to talk with another doctor and get a reference. Folks, like Patrick said, we can do that. But there's, a, there's an order in which that happens. Uh, first of all, you're going to have to do some paperwork with that doctor, which is called a practice analysis. Then you're going to go through this live demo. And if after the live demo, the doctor wants, still wants to talk to the doctor, we can get that arranged. With Patrick, I've seen a lot of doctors say, oh, I want to, I want to talk to another doctor to see if, I, if they like this system. After we do this demo, those doctors never really even ask ever again for a reference. No, it's amazing. They're, they're blown away by it. Literally, folks, on the demo, you'll hear the doctor talking to the staff and the staff talking about what they're seeing on the screen saying, I didn't know that was possible. That's what we need. That's what we're lacking right there. Uh, for example, we have real-time eligibility that checks the database of the insurance company for that particular patient to make sure that they're covered before the doctor even spends time with the patient. That can yeah. help maximize their revenue right there. All kinds Absolutely. of great things that the doctors are just 
they're wild by it. They are wild by it. All right, so let's wow you a little bit because again, uh, people want to know about where's my territory, Patrick. What 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 does my territory look like? Do I have to stay within a zip code? Uh, is there any exclusive exclusive areas that I have to stay in or out of? Let's let's talk about territory. Yeah, that's a very important question, folks. If you're talking to somebody that's a franchise, of course, they all have territories because they don't want to put too many people into one area. Our business is so unique because there are so many doctors in every given area uh, that we've uh, basically set your territory as the entire United States. And we don't have Alaska and Hawaii showing there, but of course they're part of the United States. So uh, you literally can sign up a doctor in your own area, and that doctor might give you a referral to somebody that's in another part of the country. Well, you don't want uh, to be limited in your territory, right? You don't want to be restricted in any way. So it's very important that you know that you can build this business as big as you wish. We literally have licensees that have clients from coast to coast, and that's because they were able to do that. Uh, literally, the doctor that's referred to you by another doctor, they don't care about anything other than just give me the paperwork and tell me how do I get my stuff to you. Well, using the yeah. technology we just showed you earlier, iDocs Now, uh, you can get all of that data directly from the doctor uh, without any uh, paperwork. You don't have to use FedEx or anything else. And look, as far as your territory, look how big your market is now. I know this slide is hard to read. It's it's a no-no to put this many things on one uh, slide. But if you increase your screen there some way while you're watching this webinar, you'll see that these are the specialties that are in the medical field. And Eric, I'm not sure that that's all of them. But anyway, it's enough of them, right, to help people wrap their brain around the fact that it's not just general practitioner doctors and not just your family doctor, but every specialty that's out there. Uh, hopefully you're not having to use uh, any of these specialties, but there are people who do go to these types of doctors, and every one of them can be a potential client for you. And then if you want to find out if there's any doctors that are actually in your area, again, you can go to our website. Uh, again, go under Income Potential, and then there's another link underneath there where you can actually find doctors in my area. And put your zip code in that in that area, and it'll pull up all the surrounding doctors of where it's medical doctors, family doctors, specialties. You can just check that out. So again, go to our website, absystems.com, go to income potential, under income potential, say find doctors in my area, put your zip code in there, and you'll be able to see the, just the, all the different types of doctors, probably within a what 20, 25 mile radius of where that zip code is. Yeah, you might, you might, when you first see the little map on the screen there, uh, let's say you've picked, uh, I don't know, surgeons, for example, as the specialty you want to know about. On the, on the map, it might only show you know, uh, maybe a half a dozen. But if you'll zoom out, there's a little button there that'll let you zoom out. You'll see as your you know, map expands that there might be uh, 100 or more in your area. Uh, I, I tell people, look, as far as your territory, it sh you should think of your territory as the whole United States. Now, do you want right. to drive? Uh, to see all those doctors know, but initially to find that first client, you may have to go out, you know, 30, 40 miles within your, you know, geographical area there. Uh, but man, folks, once you get one doctor, as you saw earlier, that could mean $25,000, $30,000 a year for you from that one client. So believe me, it's well worth uh, doing a little research on that. Be sure and ask anybody that you're looking at any kind of business if they've restricted you in any way as far as the clients you can sign up. All right, so let's get to this one, Patrick. How, what does ABS do to help me get clients? I mean, again, uh, we're, we're supposedly the experts. We've been around for 22 years, well, on 23 years. Uh, I think we know a little bit about helping folks get clients. So let's kind of talk a little bit about that. Yeah, this is the scariest part of any business. We understand, folks, that whatever business you get into, ours or something else, uh, Getting that client is a scary thing if you've never been in business for yourself. People think, of, oh, I've got to be a salesperson. Folks, if you know anything about sales, uh, we tell people when they come down to our training workshop, forget everything you know, because this right. is not what you think it is. The doctor doesn't need to be sold on anything other than the fact that uh, you can help them with their in increase their revenue. And once you've shown that through our books and other tools, it's a done deal. <coughs> Excuse me. So what's this illustrating here, Eric? How, do, how does this help the live demo? This, this, first of all, we want to be able to know that you know what's going on with our system. So let me say this. If you're a brand new person on our webinars today or you're going to be listening later, 
one of the things you need to be doing is asking your ABS coach that you're working with on you seeing a live demonstration of the software from the very beginning. That'll do two things. First of all, it, it'll, it'll show you and explain to you what your product and services really does. Secondly, it'll demonstrate to you how we help you get these clients. Because the same demo that we give you is basically the same demo that we give to doctors. And folks, if once you see how it works, imagine how the doctor feels about that. And again, you can come right out of training. And I'm going to use Patrick again, Jennifer Boyd. She was in that training. Uh, she did one demo with one of our other uh, coaches here. And then the other one, I actually got to do it for her. It took me 30 minutes or so. And within that 30 minutes, the doctor says, Jennifer, let's get started. Where do I need to sign up? And let's get going. That's the power of ABS helping you get clients. Patrick, I don't, I don't know any other business opportunity or franchise that goes to that length of helping our, uh, their people get uh, clients. Oh. I wish I could emphasize to people how valuable this is. And folks, there's no cost for these demos, by the way. That's, we have a one-time lifetime licensing fee that I mentioned earlier, and that's it. You never pay for anything else, including these demos. We'll do as many of these as you wish, yes. because what we want to do is help you get as many clients as you can. Now, the reason this is important is you position yourself, you see, as someone who is not just somebody, again, as an individual but a part of a nationwide network. So you tell the doctor, I can set up a demo, let me get with my te technical people to set up the demo, and, and they will do the demo for you. What they doesn't realize is that we also on the back end will answer the questions that the doctor has during that demo. So you can just sit there and listen. Uh, you don't have to know the answers to all the questions. And as we illustrated earlier, folks, we have all the tools necessary to help you get those clients. We've proven that over the past uh, 22 years that we know how to help people get clients. All we got to do is help you get that first one, right? So that's no big deal for us. We know how to do that. All you do is follow our instructions, do what we say to do, and use the tools that we've provided to you, and you're going to get that first client. Now, it may not be in the first week after you leave training. It may not be in the first two months even, like uh, Jennifer signed up three in, in two months. Sometimes it takes a little longer than that, but folks, this is a real business. It's based on a real need in the marketplace, and you can make some real money doing it. So it's worth whatever time and effort you put in. And folks, uh, let, let's say this: you may be a little shy about doing marketing. There, are, we're going to show you different techniques, as we're showing right here, of how to get that book into the doctor's hands by using that express letter envelope right up there at the top. Uh, that's one thing. We can teach you how to use sales reps. Uh, we can show you how to use the marketing pieces, uh, postcards that are up to the left-hand corner of the screen that you're looking at uh, and get people started on a what's called a drip campaign by utilizing this information of, of helping the doctors and have the doctors call you instead of you're having to go out there and hunt for the doctors. The doctors are starting to literally start to hunt you down. So we really do know all the different techniques of, of how to get in front of those doctors, whether it's a trade show whether it's mail, whether it's a book, whether it's these live demos, whatever it, is, whatever it takes, we're going to show you how to get in front of a doctor. Eric, I just realized we haven't said anything about that bottle of uh, drugs sitting there, <laughs> and uh, I'm afraid people are going to think that we can give out drugs. Well, we came up with a clever marketing tool that you'll find out about in the workshop. Anyway, I'm not going to go into that, but it's not drugs. You're not giving out drugs. Okay, and here's another way that we help you get clients, folks. We have an entire support staff that are right. ready to help you. In fact, we've had people who say, you know what, I just, because I'm working full time, I don't have a whole lot of time to devote this, I need a little help. So we'll get them with some personal coaches. We'll do one on one coaching over the phone with you. If that's what it takes to help you get your first client, we're going to do whatever it takes. And uh, Eric, with our technology partners, we probably have over 100 people that can help yeah. with uh, the support of our licensees. Then there's Dr. Vicki Ragner. Uh, folks, I'm showing you a picture here of a doctor who's a retired general surgeon. She's also the author of all the books you see here on the screen, and she's been interviewed on all the different programs, TV and radio and uh, newspapers and magazines. She's very famous, and she is working with our licensees. She does webinars for our licensees that helps them to know how to get past the gatekeeper and how to get to the doctor. Now, how does she know that? Well, she outsourced her billing when she was a doctor. And she knows the value of that, 
and she works with our licensees to help them know how to get past uh, all those uh, barriers that they would normally have in, in working with doctors. Yeah, so, so we, folks, no uh, cost for that. We, we, uh, yeah. we compensate her for her time. Absolutely. So, folks, we're here to help you. We're not going to just, you know, get your money, give you a little bit of training, get you your marketing materials, and then just kind of leave you alone. <clears throat> Patrick, I think this is a great way to let people know why we're interested in our licensees getting clients because of how yes. we get money on the back end. Yes. Uh, yes, that's very important, and we, we don't have a slide to illustrate this, folks, but let me just say this. We are interested in your success for one major reason, and that is because we live in America, and we have the free enterprise system, and the free enterprise system allows us to make money from our technology partners on the back end. Now, you're not paying anything for that, and neither is the doctor that you sign up. But we do make a few pennies on all the transactions that go through our system. So our support people are here to help you get as many clients as possible because we do make money on those transactions as they go through our clearinghouse. So uh, that's very important that you know that we become partners with you. The more you succeed, the more we succeed as a company. Yeah, and that's just the way that it's happening. The doctor wins, you win, we win, and we win by supporting you to getting those doctors. Number nine, let's get through the last couple of questions here. What will make me unique in the marketplace? Uh, Patrick, we know that there are a lot of different medical billing platforms out there, but ours is the most unique one that's out there. And let's kind of, kind of talk a little bit about that. All right, so let me first start by telling you folks what, uh, what most doctors face when they send their claims through uh, you know, any other billing company or clearinghouse that's out there. A clearinghouse is a third party entity that all billing companies send their claims through to make sure that the claims are clean, that is free of errors, and that it's formatted correctly for each one of the insurance companies that they forward it to. We have a clearinghouse built into our iClaim EMRX system. In other words, there is no third party for us to blame for anything. And that's why even though most doctors are seeing up to a 35% rejection rate on their first pass claims, we see less than 2%. Right. Now that makes you very unique in the marketplace, and it translates into a whole lot more money in the doctor's pocket at the end of the month. I, I can't overemphasize how using a, cl uh, a cloud-based system like ours with a built-in clearinghouse, Eric, we're the only, only, there's the only company in the world that has that. Right, so and that goes a long uh, we actually got a new question here from Carlos, and Carlos is asking, are there any charges for software upgrades? And this is a great great point to put this, because this, this is another unique part about this, uh, Carlos. There are no charges for software upgrades. Now, what you're going to find is with server-based type softwares, you're going to find that there are going to be charges for software upgrades and uh, updates for codes and, and things like that. With ours, ours, our software is actually updated about twice a week sometimes, Patrick. And yeah. Carlos, you may log in one afternoon, and there may be some updates by that next, by the end of the day. We're not, we're not charging you a nickel and dime in you for any software upgrades. Yeah, again, it's done behind the scenes on our servers, not on your computer. So you don't have to download anything, install it, and make sure everything's up to date all the time. That's done automatically every time you log in to our system. You are using the latest version of the software, and it's a fantastic way to keep software up to date because folks, things change in this industry on a constant basis. So behind the scenes, we're making sure that our software conforms with all the rules and regulations of the government uh, to make sure that it's uh, you know standardized. Yeah, there you go. And he says, great, with an exclamation point. So thanks so much, Carlos. There's some other things unique about our, our, our platform. Obviously, one, it can be used on a tablet, Patrick, it, either an iPad or an Android tablet. But it, it's got all these different charts and things that go along with the, what the doctors need. It's pretty impressive whenever we start getting down into the nitty-gritty. That's why we want to encourage you to see a demo of, this, of the software when you can. Yeah, it's got the scheduler built in so the doctor can see that uh, while he's out on the golf course. Uh, it has a drawing uh, portfolio in, in involved in it so the doctor can actually make notes 
with their finger right there on their iPad, they can draw and circle the things that are wrong and where they're wrong uh, on, on people's uh, bodies, you know, basically. Uh, it can import pictures even from a, of that patient's own, uh, you know, injury or, or whatever they need to the story. And then there are e-prescriptions, Eric. I think this is cool. Uh, you literally can, uh, the doctor can e-prescribe e right there on their computer, and before the patient leaves the office, it's it's at, at their drugstore ready to be picked up. Yeah. They can do yep. that on the phone even. Yeah. They can dictate their notes if the doctor doesn't want to type in all their notes, or or even worse yet, their doctors, Patrick, they're still hiring transcribe people that will actually transcribe for them while they're in the office. So that's an extra employee. Someone physically typing all that out. There right. are ways the doctor can dictate their notes right into the uh, into their the, the software. And this is one of the coolest things that there is, and that's the virtual office visits. Yeah, sometimes referred to as telemedicine. We call it a virtual office visit, and it basically means that the patient can actually make an appointment through our software with the doctor's office, and then at that moment, the doctor and that patient are video conferencing and being able to chat and make notes uh, as they talk. And yes, the doctor uh, can bill for that. Uh, again, it's for certain visits. They, it doesn't cover every kind of uh, consultation, but it's going to be a huge thing in the future, Eric. Uh, a lot of people are going to go that direction, doctors, so that they don't have to see as many patients in their office. They can just do the virtual office visits like this. Yeah, matter of fact, there are some franchises that are just starting just doing these these tele, what's called telemedicine type of platforms, and that's yeah, all they're building. To our that's been building our system for the past uh, couple of years. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Patrick, I think we've got just a couple more questions left here. And uh, number ten, what is the success experience of other franchises, franch franchisees, or business owners in this industry? Now, folks, this is an important question to ask anybody that you're looking at uh, getting into their business. Ask them to give you the names and phone numbers of some people that you can talk to. You can get back with the person who sent you the email for this webinar, one of our what we call our ABS coaches, and ask that person for you know references. We'll let you talk to some of these people. I'm going to go briefly, real quickly, Eric, because we've got about eight minutes, uh, and we'll take some more questions here if people have them. Folks, just type them in the question box there, and we'll go ahead and address those. But let me just talk to you about some people. Carla Rich and Amy Conley uh, came through our training a while back. They're in Ohio, and they have built this business. They're both single moms. They work it as a partnership, and it's a wonderful business. They are off and running. They actually have uh, their own uh, office here, as you can see behind them there, that they're working out of one of their homes, and they have many, many clients that they're doing. Here's Wendy and Bob Bruno. Uh, they're also in Ohio. Wendy works from home, uh, serving uh, seven clients, as you can see there. Terrence Patterson is in Massachusetts. He just signed up a group of a large group of doctors up there in Massachusetts. Uh, Cherise Char Mar Moreland is from California. That's her little girl there, also Mia. Uh, she loves this because she can work right there at her home and uh, build this business as big as she wants to without having to leave the house there. Uh, Bob Wilkie is up in Washington uh, State. He assigned three doctors in the first uh, three months, and now he has seven. And uh, he has three employees, and he has several clients in, uh, on his other on the other services that we offer to doctors as well. Tracy Clark is in Kentucky. She signed a sleep center within four months that bills, get this, Eric, $300,000 per month. That's, that's one good client to have, isn't it? <laughs> Jody and Martin right. Guthrie is in Mississippi. They have six practices. Both of them are full-time. They have three employees, and they still work from their home. Benjamin Ishkahoff is up in New York. He's got two offices in Manhattan, 30 employees, and he's billing for over 300 doctors. Here's Joe and Jennifer Catano in North Carolina. They have seven practices. They make a six-figure income, they say, <clears throat> working from their home with their two teenage boys there, I guess, helping out some way. Uh, Nadia Siddiqui is in Missouri. She has 11 practices. She's opened up her office. You can kind of see the door there uh, with her company name on it behind her there. Three employees, commercial office space. Christy and Brad Dunn, I love their story. They're in Tennessee on the top of a mountain somewhere out there, a very small community. But they're both full-time in this business, and they're able to uh, uh, spend time with their two children. Cash and Jatika Tandon, yes, his first name is Cash. They're right here in Texas. I visited their office that they have here in North Dallas. They have 28 employees and lots of clients in three cities. Steve Higgins is up in Pennsylvania. He quit his six-figure job within three months, and he signed up 13 doctors in the first 60 days. 
James Thomas is in Florida. He had a doctor sign up before coming to the workshop, Eric. That's how, uh, how easy it is to sign up clients. Anyway, I went through those very quickly, folks, and that's not all of them, but those are people that I've actually interviewed. You can go to our website and look under the blog. It's under news, I think, news and then blog. You can go back and listen to some of those uh, interviews with these very people that I just mentioned there. All right, cool. so let's, let's, let's start. I know you went through that one pretty quickly, but uh, I know we want to get to the. Uh, we want to make sure that we end on time. Uh, last question: uh, What assurance do I have that I won't fail? I mean, Patrick, I know we've done an entire webinar on why people fail in this business, but uh, what assurance can you give any of us that we're not going to fail? None. <laughs> I mean, really, uh, I'm being honest with you, folks. There, if any company assures you that they don't have anybody who's failed, that you could not fail in their business, something's wrong with that business model. Because we know the old 80-20 rule, everybody's heard of that, right? That 20% of your people in any business do 80% of the business, the volume. And the 80%, the other 80% of the people do only 20% of the volume. So that holds true in just about every industry that's out there. The next best thing that we knew to do, folks, is to offer an unbelievable, unheard of, no other company in the world does this, but we offer a 100% money back guarantee. Yes, you can come down to our live workshop here in Dallas, sit through the entire five days, ask all the questions you want, see all the handouts and books that we give out, everything that's handed to you during that week, proprietary information, and if for some reason at the end of the week you just don't think this is right for you, doesn't matter what it is, just tell us. We give you all your money back and part as friends. Now, Eric, when I first came up with that, you thought I was nuts. <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah, so did some of the other people. Get in the money country. back, right? <laughs> right. Well, I tell people, look, we either have what we say we have or we don't, and uh, time will tell. But we'll just offer this and see what happens. And folks, a handful of people, literally, in the last 22 years, have asked for their money back for various reasons. But here's the point: you can be assured that with our business. It's either what we're telling you is the truth here on these webinars or it's not. And when you get through with that week, you don't have to have anything other than just, uh, I didn't like Eric's hairdo. You know, uh, his beard was too, uh, is turning gray. I don't, I don't like that. Uh, whatever it is. <laughs> Maybe they don't That's like my hair because it's white. Uh, the point is, it doesn't matter what it is. If you don't like it, we will issue you 100% of that license fee back to you.